Welcome to Good Morning God Outreach. My name is Mary Obayemi. Let me pray with you. Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity to remain alive even today. We honor your name because you are the one in charge of everything that pertains to us. The speaker and the listeners today, God, we bring before you that since you have given us life and we recognize you as the God that is in charge and in control, we give you all the glory. We now invite you into our midst this morning that Lord God, what we, 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 you will be sharing with us, downloading to us from the throne of grace, it will mix with faith in our hearts, in our minds, in our inner man, in our spirit, and it will profit us. And the glory will be yours while the blessings remain ours in Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Today I want to share with you the topic that says God is never late. Most of the time as you age, you continue to age gradually and things seem not to be working well. Your maids have gone far ahead of you. You think your time is going. I want to tell you and announce to you from the throne of grace as a representative of God to you this morning and to remind you that God tells me to tell you that God is never late. I will be taking us through some scriptures of the Bible where those things that seemed to be impossible became possible because God was the God of time. God is a God of time that worked in their lives. Let's check the Bible. I'm going to be telling you the story about Lazarus and some other people whom the world has have already written off. But when it, God stepped into their lives, time and longevity gave way and the God of miracle showed up. Let's take the story of Lazarus as number one. In the book of John, chapter 11, verse 17, the Bible tells us that when Jesus, when, and then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave for four days already. That is the story of Lazarus that died in Bethany. When he was sick, Mary and Martha, his sisters, sent to Jesus, his friend, that your friend is sick. But Jesus could not attend to that, uh, to that situation at that particular time. And Lazarus died. Four days after his death, he went to Bethany to go and see what was really happening. But he was touched in his heart when he saw Martha and Mary and even the crowd crying for the de departure of Lazarus. Jesus was late. He never, even, he, he never showed up when he was sick. But when he died, he showed up. And he, being the giver of life, he brought Lazarus back to life. Let's see what verse 27 say, says. Verse 20, 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. That means when Lazarus was sick, and when the, 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 the sister sent for Jesus to come and touch him, to come and heal him, Jesus was not available. And that was the report, that was what Martha was capitalizing on. If you had been here, my brother Lazarus uh, would not have died. But now that you came, it is too late. He has gone. He has, he's dead for four days. Let's see what verse 23 says. Jesus said, said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Hallelujah. That your situation that you think you are, you, 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 is too late. You are, you are dead physically. Let's say you are looking for a child and you are getting older. 
You are afraid that you might get to a time we have no return when it will be too late for you to be a children. Today, God, yeah, as Jesus said to Martha, Thy brother shall live again. I am saying to you that your body will, will live again. I am saying to you that your business will rise again. I am saying to you that your, that, that, that your marriage will work again. I am saying to you that you will get married. I am saying to you that that failure will be turned to success. Don't just give up. Let's see what verse 38, verses 38 to 44 says in the conclusion of this very story of the resurrection of Lazarus. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead for four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast had me. 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when the dust had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. That is the power of God. To Mary and Martha, Lazarus, their brother, was already dead for four days and was thinking. And all hope, according to human effort, was already lost. But the God that, nev that is never late, that is in charge of time, that can reverse the irreversible, decided to, to, to raise Lazarus back to life. Let's check, uh, let's go see the story of another person from the Bible. The man that was born blind. Some, uh, uh, the man that was born blind. John chapter 9, verse 6 to, to 7, verses 6 and 7. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seen. If you remember this story very well, this man was 40 years old. He was born blind. 40 good years in the world of darkness that he could not see. He, does, he did not even know his parents. He had never seen them before. He does not know, he did not know his siblings. He had never seen them before. The house, the environment, everywhere that he, he had been living for 40 years, he did not know until he came to Jesus. Remember, the Bible says that he had no trace of the eyes, where the eyes should be. That was why Jesus was able to spit on the, on, on, the, on the soil and make a clay and use it like we used to draw like an artist. And he drew the face and told the man, go. Sometimes before your miracles can, tell, you can unfold, God can, can require you to do some things. If this man had refused to go and wash because uh, uh, what uh, the face that Jesus said, he might have even still remained blind forever. So obedience is very necessary here. When you are in a battle, a long time battle, to avoid delay, listen to what God has to say to you. 
listen to what is God's instruction. Sometimes what you need to do might be very little. Sometimes it might be very, a foolish thing. Uh, upon all these big problems, as gigantic as this problem is, is it this simple thing that we solve it? God is not a man. He knows the secret at the beginning of anything. He has not created what he cannot tame, what he cannot control. Your situation is not an exception. So remember this man, the, the Jesus told him, go and wash. And he went. And 40 years blindness was terminated. What about the story of the man at the pool of Bethsaida? For good 38 years, the angels will come and steer up the pool. And because he was paralyzed totally and laid there by the pool, nobody, his family had rejected him. Nobody was at his beck on. For good 38 years, he was at the pool waiting for a miracle. Until when Jesus came. And John 9, 6 to 7 says unto him. John chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. Until Jesus said unto him. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Which is by interpretation sent. And he went there and washed and he became seen. That is another story of another of the man that we are talking about. John 5 five to eight john chapter five five to eight that is the man at the pool of Bethsaida that was helpless his family members had abandoned him there he was not useful to them he did not contribute to the economy he was not useful for himself instead he was a liability so they decided to go and dump him at the uh, beside the pool the the, the pool of Bethsaida if he can die, let him die. If 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 it's if the, he can make himself to the pool and enter before somebody else enters, that is his own luck. Are you one of those people that you have been rejected also by your family? And you have nobody. The Bible is saying today, the message of God to you is saying, click unto God. Psalm 24, verse 14 says, If my father and my mother forsake me. Then the Lord will take me up. Human being can forget how they brought you to life. But God that created you, spent his time, knitted you together, wonderfully and fearfully in your mother's womb, he will never forget you. So call on him. And this, woman, this man and that has been rejected for 38 years by his family, nobody was coming to check on him again. He was abandoned. One day, he met with Jesus. John chapter 5, 5 to 6. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity, 30 and 8 years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Jesus is knocking at your doorstep. He's asking you, do you need me? Do you want me to help you in this situation? What can I do for you to alleviate your problem? Verse 7. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. That was the end of 38 years struggle, abandonment, rejection, struggle, sickness, penny, uh, 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 many, many, many other things that accompanied the waste of his time, the waste of his destiny. I am sure it were to be in these new generations of this death age, people of such would have poisoned himself and lost all by because he had lost all hope. They will have killed themselves. They will have committed suicide. No. The fact that the life, your breath is in you does not mean that you are the owner. Committing suicide is not the, the problem. Weeping every, uh, the solution to your problem. Weeping every day is not the solution. I am a living testimony of the many miracles of God. There is no life that is shattered, battered, troubled and scattered that God cannot gather, suture 
and nurture back to sheep in order to fulfill destiny. Your case is not different. You are not a non-entity. Man may condemn you. No matter where fellow human being can reject you, your parent can even deny you and disown you. It does not mean that everything about you is over. No, never give up. Keep waiting. You know the man that was that that was blind for 40 years kept he never lost hope. Whatever they gave to him by faith, he eats. Whatever the, 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 the people that comes around him, he, 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 he only respond to them by feeling and by, by, vo by their voices. He never gave up. Do you think most of the time he would, the family will not be fed up with him? They will be fed up with him because he was a burden to them. He had no eyes to even do anything to help himself or contribute to the family. Nothing. He will be fed up. The man at the bedside has seen another person coming into the water before him. Year after year, he would have been discouraged and would have wanted to take, they would have wanted to take their lives. But I am the God of yesterday that attended to them because they waited. They never waited in vain. You will not wait in vain for your God to show up in your matter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Genesis 21, the story of Abraham and Sarah, you know, at the age of 70, uh, uh, at the age of 100, at the, of Sarah, of Abraham, at the age of uh, 90, at uh, Sarah's age, they gave birth to the promised child. I want to say here that concerning your case, you need to list, you need to seek the face of God. Let him just give you the word. And once God downloads to you a single word that pertains to your, to, your, to your matter, you, did no, you don't need any other person to tell you. And you don't need any other prophet to say anything apart from what God has said. All you need to do is to hold on to it. The angels told Sarah and Abraham that by this time next year, you will have a son. Don't say that loud, but it came to pass. For Sarah conceived and bear Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God has spoken to him. Has God so spoken? To, have you given God to speak to you about your condition, about your situation, what you should do? It could be ordinary giving arm to the poor. It could be ordinary praying and fasting. It could be ordinary uh, 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 if your food, change your diet. If you are on health challenges. It could be ordinary uh, 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 what to do at any time. Running helter skelter without touching God first is a taboo in the, in the school of faith. It's a sacrilege when you have problems. What you are looking for is, is people around you instead of God. Let God. It is God that knows the person that will solve your problem. When you consult him, he will direct you to the rightful thing or the rightful place. So that is the story of Abraham. At 100 years and 90 years, they still conceived and, bought the promise, and gave birth to the promised child. Your age is not a barrier to what God can do. God of yesterday is still the same God of today and he will remain God till eternity. Whether you believe him or not, he is still God and he will remain God forever. Amen. Mark 5, 24 to 34. Remember the story of the woman with the issue of blood for 12, for 12, for 12 good years. She sold everything and she became a pauper. Yet she toyed the hem of garment. Have faith in Christ. In Mark 5, 24 and 25. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and trod him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Continue. And had suffered many things of many physicians. And has spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. 
For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. No matter what it is, you have to connect with your creator. When nobody is there, doctors cannot help you. They are human beings like yourself. They are limited. They can only help you. They can only... Uh, uh, accomplish what God wants them to accomplish in your life. So God is in your number one consultant when you are sick, when you are poor, when when you are in problem, when you, you, you don't know what to do, when you are confused, when everybody has rejected you, turn yourself back to God. Luke 13, 10 to, 10 to 13. The woman who was bent over for 18 years, she got her deliverance. All these got infirm all these infirmities gave way to the God that cannot be limited by longevity. So what is your own issue? Luke 137 says, nothing shall be impossible if you believe. Hold on to this today. Believe it. No challenge is unsurmountable by God, and you will see God in action with your own, in your own situation. And you will come back with testimony. God bless you. You will never wait in vain. Those people that we have spoken about waited. They did not mind the time. They were there holding on to God, seeking Jesus. They met with Jesus. They waited for their time. When all hope was lost, when everybody had rejected them, when the, the, the world has said that it is over. Imagine Sarah at the age of 90. Giving birth to a baby. If it were to be in our own generation today, we will say it is impossible. Science will say it is impossible. Technology will say it cannot be it, 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 it is it is fake. I I there was when this issue of uh, in vitro fertilization, a woman of 60 gave birth, and the doctors gathered all over the region and said that the the, the 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 baby they should bring the baby for DNA. It is was not the woman that gave birth to the lady to the boy, but the the boy was a reciproc a, a, a reciprocal of the mom. How then will you say, and when every DNA, DNA, and DNA prove that this is, it was the true mother, the doctors have nothing to explain again. That is the God of miracle in action. He can do the, uh, the what man thinks is undoable. He can surmount every mountain, and your case is not an exception. He has never created anything. He cannot control a thing. All he's asking, all he's waiting for, is for you to involve him seriously, sincerely in that matter. And you will see that this mountain shall become plain before say Rubabel. See the book of Zechariah. This morning I leave the message and one word of God with you. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. If Nothing shall be impossible to those that believe. Are you part of those that believe that God can do it? Then wait for him. Be happy. Don't allow anybody to ridicule you, to discourage you. Always remember the stories of these people that we have talked about today. And your own turn will surely show up. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you for a moment like this. Thank you for your word that has come out again this morning. There are so many people on, in the world that is hurting. And they are hearing the voice of your grace this morning. I pray that this words will enter into their faith. It will touch their spirit. It will mix with their faith. Those that have not known you will come unto you. Those that have turned their back unto you will come, we, we, we turn, we, we come unto you. And they will involve you in their matters. Financial matters, marital matters, childbearing matters, fruitfulness on every side, their faith, their salvation. Oh God, you will attend to them. You are the God of yesterday, the God of today, 
And when the world will be no more, you will still remain God. Therefore, these people that have had your word this morning, they will not go untouched. They will not go even still bearing their problems. The fullness of joy is their portion today. Solutions to their problems is their lot today. In the name of Jesus, meet up with them. Those that have gone away from you because of one problem or the other, help them to reroute their steps back to you. Help them to live a life that of instruction, listening to what you have to tell them and continue to live in you and to believe you and to have the capacity to wait for you and never to look for man, for, for, uh, uh, the, never to listen to the ridicule of mankind. Because human beings will talk. Therefore, Lord, grant them the grace, the power, the spirit, the anointing to wait and never to listen to evil gossip of people around them. Fortify their heart. Fill their life. Give them joy. Give them peace. And at the end of it, let there be solutions to what they have been asking and waiting for. They will not wait in vain. You will not wait in vain. You will not wait for nothing. Your God will show up in your matter. Yours will not be different from those he has done in the past in the Bible. He will do that one that you have been asking him. He will deliver you from that prison. He will deliver you from that case. He will deliver you from that dungeon. He will deliver you from that sick bed. He will deliver you from financial constraints. In the mighty name of Jesus, go today and connect with your God and see God connecting with you in return and helping you out. And you will come back with testimony and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, God. Is There is a devotional you can order. Even because there are so many other things you need to know about God. Many of it are in this book. You can connect with Amazon and buy a copy or call our number that is running on the screen. We will get it to your doorstep. Never use our email. It is better in the email than even the calling. You, you will see the glory of God walking in your life and you will not remain the same and the days of your testimony will show up. You are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.